Welcome back to our channel. I'm Anna. I'm Cassie. I'm Becca. And, and we are the, the Try Hard Girls. Girls. That was great for the third time <laughs> because we've tried to record this three times, you guys. Two times last night and nothing recorded for us. So here we are back again. Super Bowl Sunday. You know what? the Super Bowl. We're in the new <laughs> Try Hard Studios. <laughs> Which is, you know what? Just as exciting, if not more exciting, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know what? It would not be a try hard rebrand if things didn't go wrong. Like, that's just very, very on brand for With us. a few <laughs> Seriously. But, anyways, I know it sounds like we're not as excited because we've filmed this three times, but we are very excited and we are in our brand new studio. I just realized we have tea on here. It's probably for me. Yep, it's for me. Oh, it's okay. We also have these plexiglass, um, courtesy of Amorosis. Yes, because no Miss Rona is welcome here. No, no. But just imagine the studio without the plexiglass and then really just, you know, take it all in. Well, ladies, I'd say should we cheers, but... Cheers through the plexiglass? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Season two, baby. Yeah, so as you guys know, we announced at the beginning of last month that we were going to take a few weeks off to focus on rebranding ourselves, figuring out what our plan was for the next year. We're fairly new, about a year old um, podcast and YouTube channel. Um, so if you're new here, welcome back, welcome or welcome back. We missed you guys. Um, we're so glad to be here, to show you guys our new studio. Um, in the next few weeks, you'll see our branding on Instagram, on our thumbnails, everywhere. So we hope you guys like it. And if you have any comments, please, please leave them down below. Any suggestions, things that you especially like and things that you might not like because we still have time to change. <laughs> So Diane, if you're still there, let us know, girl. What Don't if, hold back. What if Diane actually still watches us? Do, I mean, haters are the greatest motivators, mm -hmm. so, and they're usually the ones giving you the views anyway, so mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. But yeah, I'm really excited, and um, we kind of like changed our content up. We were like, we're going to be a little more grown up, a little more mature. So we really went with the color scheme first, and I, obviously if you follow us on Instagram, then you got to see those sneak peeks. Um, but yeah, we're really excited, and this also means we are changing kind of how we upload things. Mm -hmm. um, and Anna, do you want to explain that? Sure, so we are no longer just putting up videos on Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. On Mondays, we are just going to be uploading our podcast audios um, available on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere where podcasts are available. And then on Wednesday, Hump Day just got special because we will now be uploading our podcast with like full on video, um, which we are excited and it will be uploaded at 4 p.m. Because time. we're like soups professional and that's how all the podcasters do it. <laughs> yeah, it's a full production here at Try Hard. It really is. I mean, have you noticed our new mics? We're super excited about them. We, like I said, we're soups profesh. We are trying real hard this year. Yeah, and we hope the sound and audio sounds better. Um, this is the first time it's actually recording and we <laughs> see the red dot. So I guess you guys can tell us if you like the sound better um, than before, but we hope you do because we've already paid money for it. <laughs> and apologies in advance if I'm too loud. <laughs> I already had to turn down your mic. I hope you didn't see me, but you were like, I, well, I did, but I was like, I'm not like, I am who I am. Love yes. me, love me at my loudest. Um, and I'm sorry if you can't hear me. Then shit, I don't know what we're gonna do. Oh, we don't have to be cranking her. She's already higher than us. We have four more numbers we can put you to. Oh, so you know what I'm really excited about our new like studio? It's just like the vibes. I am obsessed with the vibes. I love our new banner. They're fire. Yes. They're Fire is um, back. It's back, by the way. We're a, a youngin told me. We're hip, we're young, we're cool. And I just love that we're going to catch up with like holiday themes and yeah. like Tritober is going to be. Everybody. Yeah, we have our own little space to do this. And before we obviously were like doing it out of our kitchens and that was awesome. But now we have made our own little space and it just feels so special. So thank you totally. guys for joining us on our first video slash podcast back. We missed you guys. And should we just jump in? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. And obviously today is the Super Bowl. So although you guys are listening to this the day after the Super Bowl um, and whatnot, we could quickly just talk about... Um, 
the weekend. We're still trying to figure out if we're gonna be able to watch it or not, because I know a lot of our followers are from our reaction. So we appreciate you. Cassidy brought up a really cool point about the weekend, and since this is gonna be after, we'll keep it really short, but I wanted her to explain why we think the weekend ended up being the main um, performer for halftime, because just like everyone I feel like in America, unless you're like a diehard weekend fan, we're thinking to themselves, the weekend, like yeah, he's great, but typically this is like the like the like ultimate performance. Yes, like it's a monumentum thing for like these artists that have been around for like ever and are super huge, super mainstream, and he's mainstream, but I feel like he's not super super huge. Yeah. But Cassie made a really good point. Okay, this is going to be a little bit difficult to explain, um, but I think most of you guys will get what I'm saying. I feel like a lot of companies who have gotten a lot of backlash on not being, um, is diverse the right word? Inclusive? Yes, inclusive. Um, inclusive of diversity. Um, not yes. even like just being diverse because the NFL itself is diverse. It's more yeah. like speaking up on uh, um, equal treatment. Treatment. Exactly. So I feel like they're making a huge effort trying to at least get the performers to be diverse performers. Um, but in the past, when they've tried to get like a Jay Z, a Cardi B, they've all said no because they don't agree with what the NFL has been doing the past mm -hmm. couple years. And although that they might be like trying to change, I don't think anyone in the near future is going to like perform yeah. for them because Cardi they just B, don't agree. Cardi B put out a statement, I think it was Cardi B, and she said she'll perform um, as soon as Kaepernick has a job again. Which mm -hmm. is insane to me that he still doesn't have a job. Yeah, I think at this point he might not even want one, which yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. honestly, like, don't I wouldn't that. either. <laughs> no, and I think I feel like the things he's doing right now are better anyways. I mean, I, obviously he probably loves football, but, yeah. you know, everyone has to take that next step, and it seems like he's going in a really good direction. Um, but anyways, what we're saying is that I think that the only person who would do it was The weekend, and obviously they're not up to par with like a legendary Jay-Z or an ultimate performer like Cardi B who has the songs, the dance moves, everything, you know. So I think that's really might be the reason. What do you guys think? I mean, the Super Bowl, kind of like you were saying, Becca, is like the pinnacle of every artist. Like, that's what you strive for. That, like, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, of yeah. course, like a, a Grammy, like, yeah. or an EGOT, you know what I mean? But, like, that is, mm -hmm. the whole world is watching. It's mm -hmm. a big deal. And I have noticed a trend where, you know, the NFL is one of the major companies that have been under fire for um, not speaking up, not being vocal when it comes to these kind of uh, issues. Um, and of course, I do think marketing wise, st uh, like strategically what they did was a smart move on their end because they know they're going to get crap if they yeah. don't have a black performer. Yeah. And um, honestly, if Abel got it, I'm sure, because I mean, when they offered it to him, I'm sure he couldn't refuse it. It's a big deal. It's an honor. Yeah. And it's a huge deal for his career because he hasn't made those like steps up like most artists do before they get there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, there's no fault to him for taking it. I mean, that's yeah. an awesome opportunity. Yeah. And also, Absolutely. I know this year was a big year for him, too. I, um, like with his last album, which I personally have not heard, but I heard great things from about it's it. Good. Um, and I know that he got snubbed a lot. Yeah. Um, he so I feel like snub. this was his redemption in a way, like a big F you to you the know what? Grammys. That's a great point. That actually. is. I, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, I didn't. Twinsies. <laughs> in more, yeah. in more, Jeez, one, in more ways than one, and we didn't talk about this, so remind us that's next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my take on it. I'm like, good yeah. for you. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm not a big Abel fan. I mean, I like some of his older music. I don't really know what he's up to now, but. I love how you call him Abel. That's like calling your dad by his name. <laughs> that is honestly so Anna, though. <laughs> Literally so Anna. She'd be like, do you think she calls Gaga Gaga? I mean, like, sure, maybe I sometimes. Stephanie. But no, she goes Stephanie. <laughs> that's not true. I call her Stephanie. Gaga. Uh, it depends on the day. It depends on the day. But I agree with everything they said. I truly just feel like it's kind of like a band-aid fix in a way to the NFL. Like, or not a band-aid, like a token. Like, see, look what we're doing. You know, we're, we're having the weekend. You know what, though? There. I feel like some performers that I thought, oh, maybe they're not going to be good, really, mm -hmm. like, proved me wrong. Um, so, I mean, nonetheless, I'm excited to see what he has to offer. And we will be watching it. And... 
We did film a reaction video. Hopefully you were able to already view it, but it is on, on our YouTube channel. So go check it out if you were able. No pun intended. Wow, that was so good. Like, that was so comment. good. That was so good. That was so good. I hope we watch it now because that was so good. Um, that sounded wanna... so fake. But I'm sorry, I sounded so fake, but it was real. <laughs> Okay, so now you guys need to know the story of why we're triplets, okay? And it's actually really funny because, so every year for, I mean, we've known each other for over a decade now, and maybe not... We old. Actually, pretty mm -hmm. close to a decade, we've been doing Christmas presents um, every year for each other. And this year is actually a really funny story because obviously it took us a while to get back together. Literally because we, you know, oh wanted to stay safe, stay home, um, quarantine so that we were able to be with our families on Christmas. And so we waited till after Christmas, actually right around when we were about to rebrand. So it's actually kind of perfect yeah. because we ended up finally getting together, distanced of course. And exchanged our Christmas gifts to each other and Cassidy came with a little zip up. I came with a little zip up and we're getting ready to give the presents and I'm like, okay, you guys, I have to go first or last. I don't care if it's first. I don't care if it's last, but I have to go first yeah, or last. You were very adamant too. Oh there. yes. I was adamant. I was like, I have to go first or last. And Cassidy's like, well, I have to go first. I'm like, okay, I'll go last. It's and the Capricorn in me. I have to go first and everything. <laughs> and Anna's just like, okay. okay. <laughs> like, whatever. Go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And so Cassidy goes first, you know, she's giving us our gifts, we're opening them, and my mouth drops to the floor. It literally did. I was so shocked because these were in them. It says the Try Hard Girls, hashtag not sponsored. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna give us our first piece of merch. Well, unofficial. Just for us, yeah. Um, and then Becca's jaw dropped on the floor, as she said, and she's she like, laughing. okay, I have to go next to give gifts. I was like, never mind, I need to go second. <laughs> <laughs> and so I handed them mine and I'm like laughing this whole time and getting ready and like Cassie uh, had just unzipped her vest to be like oh look you I know right the whole time yeah <laughs> and so I give them their gifts and I'm unzipping my jacket and I'm like look I was wearing it the whole time and I ended up getting also our unofficial like an unofficial merch outfit for us too just like for fun you know and mine is a, it's just like a black t you know what you'll see it later it's super yeah. cute, but it was great because also funny, we ordered from the same exact online store, which is hilarious, but they're, they're like slightly different to where it's still fun and they're, mm -hmm. you know, not, they don't say the same thing. No, they, the only thing that's the same is that it says the try hard girls, but duh. Yeah. They're you know? probably like, Obviously. we gotta Google these girls. I know, right? Can you imagine like, because we probably put the orders in around the same time. Yeah. And so they were probably like, China girls, I did something for them yesterday. Who are they? They're like, no and business contact? Right. And they're like, and only three items? <laughs> we're so popular. I thought it was so funny. It was so, so it funny. It was hilarious. But yeah, now we have two uniforms. So yeah, my gift did not include anything that has to do with the China her girls. Gifts, but her gifts were so great, yes. to be honest. Yes, but I think... That would have been funny if I would have done it too. That, well, for a split second, I was like, I wonder if Anna did too. How funny would that be? It would have been. No, I think I said, I'm like, well, mine has nothing to do with it. But you know what? We do have a video of our reaction, so maybe stay tuned. Look up on Instagram. We might post it. Yeah, let's do that this week. Why not? Yeah, let's. Yeah, little hump day tree. Super easy. Oh wait, that's our new upload day. So never mind. <laughs> it's maybe a surprise. <laughs> The next thing I kind of want to bring up is the whole Britney Spears documentary. Yes. By the way, we say documentary now because <laughs> Becca, that's how Becca says it. And you know what? It's our thing now. So documentary. <laughs> I um, refuse because then I'm going to be using that in real life. No, you're just going to have to do it now. Okay. What do you mean in real life? This is my real life. What are you trying to say? Oh, you're right. What are you trying to say in real life? Right. Sorry about it. I like to put extra syllables in, okay? I know it used to be cool to like shorten all your words. No, 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 we add to our words these days. <laughs> She's quirky like that. And quirky, just, just girly things. <laughs> um, we recorded yesterday. I got to actually watch it this morning. I did too. <laughs> yes. yes. I did not. Oh, that's okay, you had other important things to Yes, yes. Um, in all seriousness, but it was full of information that I had not known before. 
a, for me, a lot of information was definitely stuff I know, knew already because I've already been very invested in the hashtag Free Britney movement mm -hmm. and follow like some people that are hashtag Free Britney. However, I will say it did give me a different perspective on my role and not just my role, but like a collective of like the consumer's role in the downfall of Britney too. So although it, first of all, I cannot stand her father, um, but it made me think about, first of all, I also hate paparazzis. They yeah. like, I hate them so much with a passion. And, but it also though, it's not, it, it is their fault, but it's also our fault as the consumers wanting to see those images. Yeah. Every time there's a paparazzi image and it's something crazy, I look that shit up. Yeah. And I need sick. to stop because I need to stop feeding to that because... They're humans. Well, yeah, totally. And it just, I mean, mental health is real. Yeah. I just think that more regulation needs to be put out mm -hmm. surrounding taking, been. like, public pictures because, I mean, I know that recently, like, em Emily Ratajkowski talked about how like she doesn't own a lot of the images of her own self and I feel like with a lot of paparazzi that's the case because they can take a picture of you and then you literally don't own a picture of yourself like because they you're own a public figure you, which is really fucked up and if that happened mm -hmm. to any of us like can you imagine uh -oh. the Ooh. ugly pictures that they would take of you and going like to the gas station the this is off. Oh, Lord, like, I know no I know this is a very serious matter <laughs> but I like see like pictures of Gigi Hadid like going like on your street roller on her watch and she's yeah. just like this if i were to do that i'd be like <laughs> yeah right yeah Seriously. i know like some stains all over my clothes no yeah i feel like there's definitely i agree with everything i said um there has been a lot of newer rules surrounding like celebrity children now like growing up we used to see shiloh and like a whole bunch of pictures of like the angelina jolie's children mm -hmm. and now they like on magazines they have to be blurred there's stuff on that but there's so much more i feel like that they could do because it is very yeah. invasive we grew up in a culture that was really disgusting like paris hilton and britney spears and Zulohan. like we literally saw it all and i think a lot of it has to do with we grew up in the technology so it was all very yeah new. everyone and was like just wow crazy we can put so much out there now mm -hmm. in the blink of an eye mm -hmm. that it was like so much that it literally i mean could have killed people like I don't know if Brit they didn't mention if Brittany was suicidal at all, but they did mention a few times that she would go into like mental health facilities, yeah. whether it is on her own will or not. Mm -hmm. um, that is still like a huge thing. I, I couldn't imagine being so scared to go outside of my house, especially with my my children, my newborn baby. Like you can't even walk outside to go on a walk. Every wrong move you're going to be criticized. Calling you, it's so yeah. awful. I was so mad too. So they had a paparazzi, one of the guys who was like mm -hmm. working Britney, right? Um, for these years, I think it was like ten years. <clears throat> and at first, I was he was you know I'm like oh he he's starting to be human you know like mm -hmm. in the beginning, and then in the end. No, they were, he goes, well, she never told us to leave her alone. And then the interviewer is like, you mean like when she said, leave me alone? And then they played the audio of her saying, leave me alone to him. And he goes, well, she meant like that day, not forever. And I was like, yeah. okay, like now you're a psychologist. Like, okay. Yeah, no, it's insane. I mean, people get brainwashed like that though. You yeah. Know what I, I, mean? wonder if I forgot his name. I haven't seen the documentary, but I like... I love Britney Spears. He's, like, uh, yeah, he's, he's a Michael. He's Latino. Michael. Yeah. He was a paparazzi and then befriended her, correct? Is that who we're talking uh, about? I don't, they didn't say that they were friends. He was the one where she um, Cause he hit would, like, his, his car, car with the umbrella. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. They. Um, I don't know if it's exactly him, but there's another one that he kind of like helped her out. I don't know if it's in the documentary. I haven't seen it, but I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it's yeah. also crazy just to see her transitioning from when she first started out in like 1997, which she was 16 when she came out with Baby One More Time. And like, you know all of this, but I wasn't like as deep into Britney Spears as most people were. Like I loved her and everything. Oh my God, my I sister and I. I didn't know like as much history. So like seeing her like fresh, young, pure, like not that she's not pure now, but just like really new to the celebrity mm -hmm. world. And just the people who started tearing her down, it just made me so sad. But one, one well, not even that though, like she wasn't even just new to the scene. 
they were talking about how this was an era of boy bands and she was the first female That's true. big pop star. Sorry, I know you were saying something, but that I felt like went in with that too. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was even that much more. Yeah, like she was really proving something. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's when they try to get in Christina and they try to put them against each other and mm -hmm. then, yeah. So like, yeah, it's it's on that. it is crazy how many people from the Mickey Mouse Club became like mm -hmm. superstars. JT, oh, Christine. JT, um, we have to cancel. I was so mad. I didn't realize that. How old were we when their whole breakup happened? Because this I did not huge, realize yeah, like how yeah. he tried to make it seem whether or not this actually happened. I'm not sure if she cheated on him or not, but he made it publicly known. The music video that Come she cheated on him. Yeah. Yes, like with a Britney look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, and maybe him too. It could be like, and I the people around him because I feel like that industry too. We see a really, I mean, one of the interviewers right was. She was 10 years old, and the only thing he would talk to her about was if she had a boyfriend, mm. and if she wanted a boyfriend, and if, and then at the end he goes, well, what about me? And I'm so like, creepy. you're 80 years old, what do you, and she looked uncomfortable, and she's 10 years old. Yeah. And, I mean, all of those questions, an interviewer, an interviewer straight up was like, and what about your breasts? Yeah. Like, seriously. What? Did oh they my put God. in the interview clip where they literally ask her if she lost her virginity? Yes. 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 It's so amazing. And they played the interview where they asked him and he said yes. Yeah. So crazy. The podcast. It's crazy. If you guys have not watched it, you need to go watch it on Hulu. Okay. Another little conspiracy. <laughs> my own conspiracy. Tinfoil hat. Um, is that, and I was talking to some, one of our friends and she was like, wait, you watched you watched it? How did you watch it? I thought it was on Hulu and I tried to watch it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. What? I typed in Brittany and I couldn't find it. And I texted her back and I was, I have the same issue this morning when I was looking for it, it would not come up oh, when I typed no. in Brittany. That made luck. You have to type in New York Times and it'll come up. <gasps> so you Strong. have to type in New York Times. It? Brittany something? Well, the, the conspiracy here, Oops, I forgot to say it. Oops, no. she did it again. We both came to the same conclusion. We like text each other at the same time that we thought it was Jamie covering up, trying to like not get it out there. So like blocking what they could name it or how to search it so that not a lot of people could find it, which is probably like so not the case. But um, it was interesting because she had the same thing and I couldn't find it either. And I had to get off Hulu and I was like, was it maybe not Hulu? And I had to go back on and like look for it. And then... When I went again, I found so it. So I found it. I put in Britney Spears and it says the New York Times presents. So I'm guessing they have different series. What's the title of it? A season one. You typed in Britney Spears and it popped up? Yeah. <gasps> it did not do that for me. It says season one, episode six, framing Britney Spears. So yeah, it's in the title. That's it's crazy. Yeah. It's very interesting. But yeah, it's must watch really quick, about an hour. Yeah. I'll definitely um, watch. And it makes me want to watch the other New York Times um, episodes in that series because mm -hmm. there's six. That was episode six. So there's five other ones that they mm -hmm. dropped. Um, and I'd be interested to learn. I mean, I'm a big fan of the New York Times. I feel like they're good publications. So they're one of like the last, I mean, they're <laughs> said to be one of the last, you know, that are really true journalists uncovered no apologies you know who's to say you never truly know but um they still hold that like high regard in society as being yeah. true yeah for years too yeah it's really good you guys must watch for sure and hashtag free britney mm -hmm. ain't that the truth funny can't believe we're still saying it but yes yeah it's crazy the conservatorship needs to be removed immediately 100 percent, and nobody should have to the fact that she was working during it just proves that she was capable of controlling herself mm -hmm. and her life i mean she's very coherent when she's doing all those jobs and work yeah and it's crazy to see the difference too and then you like start looking back at all of her lyrics and all of her songs and but a lot of it she didn't write unfortunately no i that's my point is that you can see the difference between those like her performances and the way that the songs that she comes out and the narrative that was being pushed. I got what you're saying. 
on her. I feel really bad because as I got older, I realized like what I contributed to, like the sanity and everything that happened. You know, um, we went to the circus tour. Yeah. And she shouldn't have done that tour. It was right after her meltdown. It was right after everything. You know, it was not her that wanted to go on tour. You know, that was her father. That was her management. I did not know that at the time. I, I didn't no. either. That's what I mean. So and I still had a blast, but like. You know what I mean? Like, how are we supposed to know that? But it's fucked up to think about it as you're older. Yeah, they were talking about that tour in particular and how I think she made like 53 million it from was the huge tour. Because that was her like comeback. That was yeah. her comeback. But she didn't get any of the money. She got a million a month. And oh, it's like something like 1.5 percent would go to her. Yeah, directly. Yeah, yeah, it was something crazy. Yeah, but definitely check it out. It was really good. Documentary. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a downer like over here. We've just keep talking about very sad news, but do you guys hear about Marilyn Manson? Dude, yeah. Okay, so it hasn't been a secret. I mean, there's been speculation for years, but um, Evan Rachel Wood, his ex fiance, finally actually said his name and pretty much said, like the person she's been talking about sexually abusing him, sorry, sexually abusing her for years was actually Brian, AKA Marilyn Manson. And now four other women have come forward. One of them being Phoebe Bridges, um, which she actually just uh, sang was a musical uh, guest at SNL yesterday. So great, good for her. She's doing good. Wow. Um, Who was the guest, wasn't it uh, Dan? Lovey? Yes. Okay. Um, I yes. That. I yeah. saw the monologue. It was great. Oh, of course. His so mom bad. tweeted, I, okay, I know this is going to about to be dark, so really quick about Dan. His mom tweeted the cutest tweet about him being in SNL and how he used to be bullied out of camp, and he said, to all the campers and cab and whatever, like, look she at him now. Oh, and it was so cute. Like, so we love cute. a supportive mom. Yeah, that's so sweet. Um, but Phoebe said that she went to a party at his house and with some friends, and there was some kind of a weird vibe. She said that at one point he was just joking he goes that room over there that's the rape room and since then she said like something was just off and she didn't like it and she goes like management knew everybody knew it's something that was just kept quiet and she's like and now that everybody's talking about this i feel comfortable saying it i know more women will come forward um but yeah now he um another thing about it is that they're putting a video out from like five years ago at one of his own shows where he's reading a letter from a ex-girlfriend pretty much saying that he abused her but he was saying like this isn't about me you can't think i'm a racist you can't think i'm this and that but he's like fuck this let's sing my song but it was a letter from a woman that was like was a victim and he was just totally like i'm yeah. so over people hiding and making excuses and hiding all of this kind of stuff just to protect a monster like Jeffrey Epstein, like all of these people, Harvey Weinstein, all these people, the reason they've done it so many times over and over again and are not getting caught and years go by is because people are allowing it to happen. They're enabling the behavior and hiding it and shushing up about it and allowing it and in some cases bringing these girls or young boys to them and it's disgusting and so what I am here for in the hashtag me too movement is people no longer doing that not to say it's not still happening because oh, I'm yeah. sure it is yeah. but at least it's some progress. I think it's pretty awesome though that people are coming forward. I, I could only imagine having to speak out to the public literally mm -hmm. millions and millions and millions of people oh, telling yeah. them what happened to you but it's crazy how it's kind of like a spiral effect like once one woman or or person mm -hmm. comes out about something that happened to them with someone super public mm -hmm. it's just kind of like an ongoing yeah. other people are because, coming out and it finally mm -hmm. you know once you have that many people coming out and saying this happened when none of these people know each other like that's proof in itself you know yeah. um his ex-wife oh god the burlesque um dancer something wrong tease i forgot she's beautiful um she wrote a little letter saying how she in her seven years that she was with him i believe they were together for a while i might be wrong i'm so sorry but they were together for a while she said that she never experienced anything however that she believes women and that she will uh, you know support the women that are you know accusing marilyn manson of the horrendous things mm -hmm. that he did 
um, and then she even like said like please get support seek help here's a line for this mm -hmm. and that so it was nice to see that she was still like I believe you um, mm -hmm. he got dropped from his label he got dropped from the CAA and he also got dropped from a movie appearance he was supposed to be in which well I mean, good that's what he fucking gets and next you should get dropped into a prison cell. Thank you. You know who else should get dropped it, and has multiple times is Army Hammer. Girl. Oh God. That is another level. And I went down the rabbit hole on that one and it was disgusting. Having to listen to the voice memo of him describing eating a deer heart that he cut out of a deer. Oh my God. Dude, Alexa. I'm in, I'm in. Play Cannibal by Kesha. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. But right seriously, <laughs> it's song. Yeah, yeah, not when it's real. Not yeah, when it's real. She, okay, not trying to be insensitive. insensitive. I'll eat you. <laughs> I'll eat you. Up. Isn't that TikTok dance? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, Follow us on TikTok. <laughs> Okay, make my heart be painter. That's a TikTok dance? Yes. Like, haven't you yes. guys done it yet? No, I don't know it. You guys, this was in, like April yeah. of lockdown, okay? Yeah. This is, that was so that, long. That was right when... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you I think you were going to see what I was going to say. No, that's when we should have done it. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> I was like, that's when Addison Rae was just getting popular. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's that crazy. That was so 2020. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. Um, you know Armin Hammer though? I fucking hate his name. Every time someone says his name, I think of Armin Hammer oh. product. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm yeah. only going to think of that now. It is yeah. so, so annoying. Why do parents not think about these things? I don't know. It's crazy. He actually is getting what he deserves though. He also got dropped from two movies. Good. I don't know about his management though. But You know, yeah. and it'd be different if he came out and publicly said something like this isn't true, or he yeah, has he not done that. Shit. So he hasn't said shit. Like that. You mean, what, what? Yeah. There's like no way to def to like defeat it because there's pictures. Those there's DMs are real. Voice memos. Yeah, there's bruises. There's yeah, and his same thing. So his ex-wife actually made a statement too on her Instagram, kind of. She well, she did, but she was basically similar thing. I believe women. She didn't say any if anything had she happened to her or not, but she said it's disgusting. I believe them, but they haven't been together for a while, and they have kids, and she has full custody. I'm pretty sure. You know what? I think I was thinking about Army Hammer and his ex-wife that they were together for seven years or more, but I don't know. I think they yeah. were together long, but anyway, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I will not be calling him by his name. So, yeah, no. To know I get my reference. Disgusting, and there's <laughs> speaking of which, though. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that took a second. <laughs> Did not hit. <laughs> it's like cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> uh, I can't remember if he was a part of this movie or what, but there's like this correlation. They're about to be coming out with a movie about cannibalism. No, and it's not. Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet is going to be the lead in it. And I'm like, how disgusting. Why are we making movies about it and fa and making it a fantasy to people? Like that's gross. Yeah, it's with the director of Call Me By Your Name, and that's right. I, who's working? I don't with think Arnie had anything to do with it, but it just happened that they were releasing like it to the public that this movie was going to be made like right when everything. Well, was there made. there was some correlation, and now I'm remembering him and Timothy were in a movie together, yeah. and the director was name. this. Oh, that, oh, you just said that. Wow. Thank you. Yes. I'll be here all day. <laughs> wow. We can leave them behind us, yeah. mm -hmm. and hopefully all those women can move forward now that they've said their piece, and we'll see who else comes forward, and just to make sure that they are officially canceled, because that's fucked up situation, so mm -hmm. bye, see you never. Girl, do you have any good news? Because I feel like we just drowned in them in bad news. Do you? Okay. Well, we could talk about Bretman Raw. <gasps> yes! Oh my god. I found out yesterday from your snap or from your Insta story. Yeah, he's my best friend. Literally. So, like, I got the hot set. That's my best friend. He a real bad bitch. Drive his own car. He don't need no lift. Got no watch him. Does he drive a Corvette? Corvette? Oh, Corvette, God. Corvette. She, okay. a Corvette, Corvette. I gotta say it. This bitch, she's been like every day. She's like, Corvette, Corvette. It's back in my head. If you watch TikTok, if you watch TikTok, you know the pain of hearing it over and over again. And then you get those little phrases stuck in your head. Like, t you cannot tell me that you didn't have board in the house and that in the house board stuck in your head for a good solid week, okay? Just saying. It's the same thing. 
Corvette, Corvette. Okay. Yeah, I can't hear oh no ever again. <laughs> oh God, yes. Seriously, like TikTok is amazing, but this also happens, okay? This is what happened with Vine though. Yes, so you true, know, so true. And they're so, so iconic. Similar. It's iconic. Iconic. <laughs> um, but yes, Mr. Bretman Rock is becoming a reality star. As he should have been, yeah. literally for years and years and years. Yes. I don't know why no one snatched him up before yet. So good job, MTV. Yes, you got a real one there. Yeah, so he is going to have. It's going to be on YouTube, kind of similar to the Tana Mojo series that they did with her, um, and it's going to be a reality show based on his life. And I'm really excited. Besides the fact that I'm a huge fan and I love him, I think it's great representation of someone in the LGBTQ community who's an immigrant who is Filipino and. There's, I don't, I can't think of anybody who is. I know he mentioned in the little trailer about the same thing. He's excited to be represent, representing, and he hadn't seen anyone that was like him until, and Anna probably knows the name, I do not, but a drag star in RuPaul. Which one, girl? There's so many. Filipino. Filipino. Jujube? I don't remember. I don't know. Well, either way. But I'm super excited for him, and I know it's gonna be so good. Oh my god, did you be if you ain't fucking Filipino? I'm so sorry, girl. <laughs> she tweeted me once. She's pretty. What? She Wait did. a minute. Did you be? She did? Yeah, a long time ago, back before Drag You came out, like years ago. Oh my god, I do not be my little drag. I'm like, I'm a big fan of you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and her Twitter fingers back then. Seriously. Back then. Not as common girl, right now, but. Not anymore. But, bitch, at one point, Khloe Kardashian tweeted me too. Remember? Yeah, I do remember that one. That was the day I got a Twitter. I was at your house. <laughs> That's, you were like, you have to get a Twitter. And I'm like, what's Twitter? And I was like, girl, your dreams can come true. Oh, so I was like, oh my god, I'm probably, oh. I was tweeting Chloe like, oh, she'll tweet me too. Oh, I do didn't remember. have it. Didn't have it. The closest <laughs> I'll ever be to the Kardashians. Seriously, one time <laughs> Chloe tweeted me. It was about <laughs> Chloe and Lamar. No one tweeted me. <laughs> I right. think I said I wanted like a season two or something. She goes, oh honey, we really hope so. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. Gosh, I just love MTV. I feel like overall they're just. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know too much, but they come off very like progressive, very um, like obviously all their shows are super entertaining to watch, and they're very different, different, and grabs teens' attentions and tweens. Yeah. And all of their commercials—I shouldn't say all, but a lot of their commercials are geared to that demographic in positive ways, yeah. which I really respect. You know, like don't smoke that doesn't actually make you look cool don't vape it you're not cool um you know all of those kinds of commercials i really appreciate yeah their values are are well intended yeah. for sure we love mtv you know i could have been an mtv star what do you mean wait what i tried out for mtv made <gasps> i love that wait, show wait what, what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> you guys <laughs> I can't believe I've never said this. I didn't get Wait, it. What? I didn't get it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I was when? at I was at summer camp. You know, of course one you were at summer camp. Oh, every <laughs> summer I spent at summer camp. This girl, every like all of them, all the summer, all of them, all the summer camp stories. Like I'm just because growing up, I always wish I could have gone to like a yeah. summer camp, like the ones you see on like the Parent Trap, and that's really? what she had. I, I didn't have that either. So she went to like, Bug Juice, and if you don't get the reference, you're too young. But. <laughs> One day, the MTV crews came to the camp, and they were uh, they were looking for the next MTV mate. Um, if you guys remember that show, like they had great shows yeah, back when yeah. we were growing up, and I wish they'd bring some of them back, like MTV Made. Um, but yeah, um, I didn't get it. What did you um, want to be? A girl in a different cabin, dead. I think I said I wanted to be like an actress, oh, which I mean, like that was very on brand for me. Like I was in I all the acting like classics. That would have been a great story, though. I'm surprised they didn't. They could call you like. Oh, I, so I don't, I think the person that won, I can't remember, but I think she wanted to be like a hip hop dancer. I saw that episode. Mm. There's too many of like those on me, to be honest. Like, I know, dancers. what the heck? Actress would have been good. It would have been, and I would have been a star, honey. A star. A you, star is born. You okay? are already a star in our eyes. Oh, You've always so. been a star. That's right. Thank you. Oh, my God. Um, guys, she actually was an extra in a movie with Zach Galvanakis. <laughs> true story, true story. My mom was too, because she was my chaperone, and they needed another extra, and so <laughs> oh my, my mom was too. 
so you both had to go to makeup and hair and makeup because we had to get something attached to our necks. And um, yeah, <laughs> just it was wish fun. I would have known her during this time because I could I, I already know. imagined her like at school, like you guys have an audition tomorrow. Actually, that was not me at all though. I don't think anyone knew. <laughs> that was I didn't tell about you were Hannah Montana. I was I was the best of both worlds. Dude. I was a like, country gal with big city dreams. <laughs> That's very on brand. That's also on brand. I mean, like, I'm sure I told a few people, but I it, I definitely didn't go parading it around. I actually remember the first time you told me that you wanted to be an actress when you were younger, because we were, like, going through our um, hometown, driving by. She goes, and that's the theater where I was um, part of Oliver and Company. No, no, no. Um, a, or, or the night before. A Christmas Carol. Oh, sorry, A Christmas Carol. Getting Ma correct. Sweetie. Martha Cratchit at your service. Um, she was a humble queen. She, <laughs> she, she always is. I was then. I ain't no yeah, more. I was gonna say, she's so <laughs> now. Oh, no. Along with them dreams. Oh my god, yeah. I have a question. If you guys were to be on the show, what would you want to be made into? Oh my god. I feel like I still would do actress because I feel like it'd be fun, you know, do some improv classes. Haven't done improv probably since that year, so I mean, I think it'd be fun. Should we put you on the spot right now? Oh God, no. <laughs> you just we'll that for home. another day. I'm sorry, hold on. <laughs> Emma, like, has a scenario. She's like, oh, no, 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 honey. Okay, here you go. Here's your scenario okay. and scene. I like you're acting all shy when, gr like, growing up. I mean, we're still growing up, but we, we used to do this when we hang out. We would give each other like scenarios, and we just sit on the couch and watch. <gasps> I like how you said when we're growing up as if we don't still do that. <laughs> like your sisters too and my yeah, sisters. Yes. I don't do that. Hashtag Savannah is a star. Shout out. You're a star. She will be a star one day. Mm -hmm. She'll do anything you tell her to. She'll make the scene happen. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Um, can I choose a famous podcaster as YouTuber? <laughs> love that. Love that for us. Yes. Made the, the try hard world. <laughs> no, love that for us. Me. Thanks for including us. What about like a chef with your own show? Like a yeah, maybe chef like Cass 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 would be fun. Mm -hmm. That would be really fun. Be Honestly, I want to see Cassie in the recording studio with the rap album and personally. Yes. Yeah, with the right team girl, you can make it. Anna? Um, I would Singer. Broadcast. A broadcast? What the hell? A Broadway star. Baby. Yes, girl. You know she's already got the voice. Now she just got to get the dance numbers down. <sighs> yes, that would have been my Give dream. Give us something. Girl. Angelica, Eliza, and Peggy, the Skyler sisters. Angelica, Peggy, Eliza, work. <laughs> yes, they're time to charm. But if you know, like the the one with the voice is all the way over there. <laughs> Bitch. Um. Well, I think you would be a great Broadway star, and I don't think you need MTV to get you there. Mm -hmm. Oh lord. That's just my <laughs> personal opinion. Let us know if that's your personal opinion about this star over there too. Even though my Eliza was shy, but okay. <laughs> well, girls, I think I think we're done. Yeah, we had a lot to talk about. We did, and even if it this is one of our shorter ones, I feel like it's fun. Just we're back, we're doing our thing, you know, doing, doing our I'm thing. Doing my thing. Hey. Oh my god, I wish I, I didn't even see what is Miley wearing or one of the outfit. Like, oh, oh I, I saw, saw it on Insta. Big fan. Oh girl. Big fan. She okay. a bad bitch. She I a bad bitch. She a me. No. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We are so happy to be back. We missed you so, so much. Don't forget to follow us everywhere at the Try Hard Girls. And at our personals, at Cass Kardash. At Nick Farbeck. At 8Caroline19. Thank you guys so much. We're in our new studio. We're so glad you're here with us, and we can't wait to continue on this journey of 2021. And with that, the Try Hard Girls are... Ow! <laughs> Keep it, keep it, keep it.